Hello, hello. Well, you probably made it this far. Or actually not, maybe you randomly stumbled upon this video. But it's already the fourth part of my Bulgarian trips. And this time we go in and the whereabouts of Velika Ternova, touching upon a lot of interesting folklore and rural areas. So let's get right into it. Velika Ternova. Here we go. But first things first, in the last video we left off on a bus taking us to the next location. And by the way, don't trust this tired hangover man's face at his first experience with blue wine. And boy oh boy, it's a complete scam. Also, apologies for mispronouncing the name of the town. Because of this bad boy, I still find it hard to make a proper sound out of it. Veliko Ternovo, the little town among the hills in central Bulgaria called the City of Tsars, primarily due to actually being a capital in the Middle Ages and was the residence of Asen dynasty. The name comes from the word Turn, which means torn. So it's a thorny town, if you want to call it like this. It then became Great, or Veliko, in 1965 to show the significance of the place and also distinguish from this mere Melkotarnova that's on the border with Turkey. The town is full of history, and despite being quite small and attracts a lot of tourists every year, it also helped to re-establish places like Samovodska Charsha, where people can visit the plethora of craft shops that preserve century-old traditions. However, the most iconic point of attraction remains Tsarevets, which we were walking towards. Mm -hmm. And there it is, in all its glory. Tsarevets is really an impressive place to be. The construction of the stronghold was set in 12th century. However, even before that, there was a Byzantine settlement. After the establishment of the castle, it became one of the most important fortresses in Europe, even compared to Rome and Constantinople. However, good things don't last for long, and in 1393 it was besieged and caved into the Ottoman hands, and that marked the fall of Bulgarian Empire. And you can definitely see why this particular spot was strategically picked as a place for a fortress due to its great outlook on the valley, and at this time, the city of Ulike, Ternova. And then we moved to Arbanasi. Arbanasi is a village next to the town of Ulike, Ternova, and it's considered to be an ethnographic landmark. It contains a high number of classic Bulgarian revival architecture, as well as some important churches and monasteries. However, to my taste, this place is slowly losing its charm because of the hype around it. You know, it's great that the tourist infrastructure is developing, but it's also disrupting the authenticity of this place. And don't get me wrong, I totally understand that the economics also kind of showing that the way this place needs to develop further, and it still has a lot of beautiful things to see and check out, but I honestly enjoyed much more our next stop. So we rented a car and went to Turkasheni, which is a village about 40 minute ride from Velika Turnovo, next to the town of Elena. And it's an incredibly adorable place. I got to stay in a very comfortable room and had a proper Bulgarian dinner prepared by Dimana's grandmother. And that was definitely the highlight for me. You know, the architecture looked super similar to what people go for in Arbanasi. However, you know, it had more tranquility and it really stayed true to its core. And mostly, at least. That place was established by Dimi's great-great-grandfather, who, together with his family, was running away from Turks and started the settlement while hiding in the mountains. With the time, it grew into a little village, as it is now. So it was so crazy to think that a lot of people living there are actually loosely related to each other. I think I'm grateful the most for the fact of getting this feeling, those memories from my childhood when I was with my grandfather in the village, 
you know, these vivid colors of different fruits and berries and just being one-on-one -on -one with the nature was so peaceful. Besides all that, this village is located next to Zhidovska Cheshma, which is a place with a legend. And it tells a story about a dragon who fell in love with a beautiful girl, Rada, who was living in this village. Dragon turned into a handsome young man and met the girl and told her not to tell his secret that he's a dragon to anyone. So it was only between him and her that they are seeing each other. But her worried mother once decided to follow Rada into the woods where they were seen with a dragon. So she found out the secret. And after this, dragon was really, really pissed off. So he destroyed the girl's house, killed the girl. And after all this, he probably was having a really mental breakdown or something. He hit the ground with his tail and hid in a mountain. So the mountain where he hid now calls Zmievitz because like Zmi is like a dragon kind of thing. I think dragon is the closest in English to this. And after dragon left, people noticed that there is a stream of water coming from the ground and they noticed Rada or a woman who looks like Rada next to this water. And then she told them that this water will bring them life. And after this, the place was called Zhidovets, which means the one that gives life. So the legend says, if you got to drink the water from Zhidovets, you will live forever. Quite cool, I must say. Can I live forever after visiting Arbanasi? I don't think so. That, of course, didn't mark the end of our journey because we were on to seeing Bulgarian Stonehenge. For that, we hopped into the car and went to the village called Rayevci. But first, we had to pay a tribute to Volchan Vojvoda. He was a semi-legendary person in Bulgarian history, pretty much like a local Robin Hood. He had his own gang that was robbing Turks who ruled Bulgaria at that time, and of course he helped Bulgarians who were suffering. He also accumulated so much gold that people still trying to find his hidden treasures in the area. Presumably, of course, that it all was true. And there it is, Bulgarian Stonehenge. It is the whole construction that resembles Stonehenge or supposed to, because you know, Rayovci is actually a birthplace of one of the wealthiest men in Bulgaria, so he decided to do something good for the place where he was born, and he decided to actually fund opening the Volchan Voivoda complex, including the Stonehenge as well. So, basically, this place was opened just five years ago, in 2017, and you know, just some stones positioned in such a way with some famous Bulgarian quotes. And then, right next to it, and close by the lake Jovkovci, we can see the pantheon of all Bulgarian voivodas, or which are like some leaders who were fighting for Bulgarian independence back in the Turkish times. And of course, being right next to such a picturesque place as Lake Jovkovci, we couldn't resist the temptation but to actually check it out one last time before heading back to Velika Tirnovo and taking the bus to Sofia. So it's been quite a journey. And as we made back to the main point, the focal point of Bulgaria, Sofia, you can anticipate the very last video about the capital of the country. Thank you very much for watching all this. If you haven't seen any previous videos about Bulgaria, go check them out or check something else if you want to check something else. Put a like or dislike or make a comment or subscribe. You know, I mean, you're up to do whatever you want because you are a free person. I have no real power over you. So please, the only thing I can do is just beg, beg you for all these things like all the YouTubers usually do, right? Then I. I am calling my, I guess, I I mean, technically I am, so, you know, you, you don't have to listen to my rant anymore, it just will go on, I guess, for 
some time so you know i can actually put all this and credits and all the other things so you know just feel free to do whatever you want bye